Today we're working on step two of the care packages and correspondence badge. So step two of every badge is to learn from others. So we are lucky to get to interview Rachel from Countdowns and Cupcakes. She runs a business and runs a blog and a website all about care packages. Yes, yeah, so we had an awesome conversation with her. She gave us a lot of information, things that would have taken us a long time to figure out ourselves, like how to know what to mail, what's allowed to be mailed to different countries and to different states, how long these things typically take. She had a lot of good like mistakes she's made and learned from so that we don't have to make the same mistakes. And yeah, yeah really good general tips um, on care packages for anybody and everybody. And it was a delightful conversation. Yep, so we will go to the interview now. Hi, Rachel. Thank you so much for talking to us today. We really appreciate you taking the time. Um, so if you wouldn't mind to start, tell us a little bit about yourself and your business. Yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. I am Rachel McQuiston. I am the owner and chief care package maker at Countdowns and Cupcakes, where we help families stay connected during times of separation through beautifully, thoughtfully decorated care packages. Um, I am a military spouse, so I'm very familiar with being separated from people that I love and, and working to feel connected to them, and, and I help other families do that same thing. Very cool. Thank you so much. Um, as you know, we're working on step two of a care package and correspondence badge where we're learning about care packages, including the history of care packages and then how to put them together and um, you know, gathering up the supplies and sending some ourselves. So we really appreciate your uh, knowledge and your, your background in this area. So we have some questions about care packages. Do you want to start? Sure. So could you give us a little history on how you got started making care packages and how it turned into a business for you? Most definitely. So like I said, I am a military spouse. Um, I met my husband when he was pretty well established in his military career. I, I came in a little bit later in his career and I had no idea about anything related to the military. I was brand spanking new, had no one in, the, in my family who had served. Um, and so it was all very much a learning experience for me. Um, no more so than his very first deployment. We had been together about a year and a half or so um, dating and he deployed for five-ish months. Yeah. Um, and I had a really hard time with that. I'm not going to lie. It was a struggle for me. I struggled feeling like I was still part of his life. I mean, he was living in a whole different time zone, on the other side of the world. He had a whole set of stressors and a whole set of concerns that I could not relate to in any way, shape, or form. Um, when your loved one is deployed to a combat zone, it is very hard to feel like you're a part of their life because like, the things happening to you mean very little to them when they're overseas, right? I mean, when you're complaining because the hot water heater is, is broken, like it's not really, it, it's hard for them to connect and it's hard for you to feel connected. Um, so I struggled for the first couple of months with him being gone and I, I looked for ways to make him a part of my daily life so that it made it feel like we were more together. Um, and the best way I found to do that was care packages because it made him part of my day. I had to think about him when I was at the grocery store because I had to remember to buy deodorant for him for his care package, right? Mm -hmm. I had to think about him on Friday nights when I was figuring out what I wanted to do over the weekend because I needed to decorate the box so that I could mail it on Monday. Just those like little things that made his presence part of my life on a daily basis were huge. And of course, like he gets the box at the end, right? And he feels loved on and cared for because I'm sending him stuff from home. I'm putting the time and effort in and it, it changed it, changed the whole experience for me. Like I actually began to look forward to doing the boxes and deployment wasn't such a bear and such a chore because I had something fun that went with it. And I started to share them just because it had made such an impact for me. And I thought, you know, if it means this much to me and it works for my family, odds are it's going to help other people as well. So I just shared them just because I thought they were cute and fun. And people got very excited about my designs. And were very often I heard, oh, I wish I was that creative. I, I wish I could do something like that. I just, I don't have the time. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. It's like, I got you. I could do that. So I started making the pre-decorated flaps that you just attach to the box and then send wherever they're going. So... That is kind of the origin story of my business. I'm an accidental entrepreneur. I did not set out to own my own business, but here we are. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. yeah, so there's like a certain size of box that these flaps fit onto, and you can just buy them and, and pop them on there, right? 
Yeah, so um, more often than not, if you're sending a military care package, you want to use a USPS flat rate box. They're those, if it fits, it ships. Um, and it's really good because you can send that box um, to Iowa for the same price that you would send it to Iraq. And so oh. it's, a, it's a cost savings measure for a lot of military families. Like you could send whatever size box you want, but it's gonna cost you 80, 90, $100 to ship it overseas. Whereas these boxes, the biggest one costs like $19. So yeah, yeah. And um, you know, it's the same price in the United States. Um, so if you were sending to you know, someone in school or someone just in a different state, you could use that same box and you can pack it as tightly as you want. It can weigh as much as you can get it to weigh and it still only costs you that $18. So that's, that's a great it. tip. So yeah. just purchase those at the post office. Yeah. So the box itself is free. You can get them, you can take as many as you want from whatever post office you want. Um, and then you just pay when you go to physically ship the box. Um, you can also get them online at the post office. So if you go to the post office's website and they call it like a military care package kit or something like that. Um, but you can get the boxes, like the customs forms, the tapes, they actually mail them to your house for free and it's fantastic. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Anything to save some time, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. So do you have any other kind of mailing tips like that? Yeah, so um, definitely those flat rate boxes are 100% the way to go. Um, certainly, I always tell people um, that they need to follow shipping regulations. So I did not know it until I started sending care packages, but the post office has rules about what they are willing to put in the mail, right? Like they don't want to send liquids. They can't send perishable items, like anything that explodes, that kind of thing, right? Um, and a lot of it's like, oh, duh, right? Um, mm -hmm. But when you are shipping to another country, you also have to adhere to their regulations. Mm -hmm. And this trips up a lot of new, uh, people new to the care package game because they like want to send Slim Jims. Well, Slim Jims have pork in them, which in a lot of countries mm -hmm. is not allowed. So you have to pay attention to that kind of stuff. Um, luckily, the post office on their website literally spells it out country by country. So you could say, oh, I'm surfing to Germany, and it'll tell you like the things that aren't allowed in Germany. Wow. Um, definitely check those out. Yeah, yeah. And it's things that you wouldn't even think of. Like, um, you can't send things that explode. So obviously, that's like bombs and fireworks and things like that, right? Very basic things. But things like aerosol cans can okay. explode. So like spray deodorant and like spray shaving cream also can explode. So technically you're not supposed to send those. So you have to like take what they told you and actually think it through um, as to what items you're sending. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, we also had a question about timing. So um, sometimes we, we mail a package in it shows up way after we intended it to. So you know, kind of, you just make sure you send it early enough or have you had any experience kind of figuring out the timing? Yeah, so definitely um, within the United States, it's a little bit easier than if you're shipping overseas. Um, unfortunately, like mail is mail. So at some point, there's not a whole lot you can do. Um, but I always like to send anything like one to two weeks before I think I want it there. Um, because at holiday time, which is when everyone wants to send something, right? The mail is actually slower because they just have more of it. Um, so that thing that usually takes four days can now take eight days because there's just so much bulk mail that it takes longer for it to get where it needs to go. Um, if you're shipping to a military address overseas, once the U.S. Post Office hands it to the military mail service, like usually right before it leaves the country, you have no idea. Like whenever it gets there is when it gets there. When they have enough mail to send a plane over, that's when they send it over. So, wow. Yeah, you're kind of at the mercy. But um, for me, I always like would send something as soon as my husband arrived in country. I would tell him, like, I send it today, right? Tell me when it arrives. And he would tell me, you know, a week and a half, two weeks later, it's here. And so then I would have kind of an idea of how right. And I would try and, like, plan stuff backwards in order to make sure it got there for Christmas or birthdays or whatever it might be. That's similar to my experience with uh, the dorm system. With my mm -hmm. college. So once it gets into the university mail system, you have to be like, <laughs> when it will actually get to them. So Yeah. 
it's oh, like, like it's over to pick it up so disappears in their services and you're like I don't know when yeah. it's gonna arrive <laughs> yeah. but I would say you know if you send something even if you um sent it regular mail it wasn't going to a dorm it wasn't going overseas like just give the person who's receiving it a heads up like hey I sent you something keep an eye out for it um that way you know you have a better idea of how long it's actually taking to get there it's a great idea yeah Okay, good. Good logistical tips. <laughs> you had any kind of care package shipping mishaps before? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. Okay. So, um, uh, again, so my experience is shipping overseas, right, to you know uh, foreign countries, and I like just didn't think before I sent. Um, my husband's favorite candy bar are Reese's peanut butter cups. Like I just mm. didn't, it never even occurred to me to like be concerned about it, but they arrived and they were like one giant melting <laughs> disaster. Oh, no. um, so like it was summertime. I knew it was hot out, but you don't really think about that kind of stuff. But when you're shipping like from the United States to another country, they ship it in a boat or in a plane and like it's not air conditioned so it right. makes perfect sense that it would arrive melted and, and kind of gross but um so I would avoid chocolate <laughs> during <laughs> the summer months mm -hmm. pro tip for you um I've also had um issues with um like heavily scented items so mm. bar soap air fresheners like those are kind of the two biggest ones that I've sent um if you do not leave them in their original packaging so like in the cellophane in the box and then like put them in a baggie they tend to leak their smell into the other items because it's like a tight and close space mm -hmm. hot maybe they melt just like a little bit um and so they release their smell into everything else so you end up with like Irish spring scented shirts and Irish spring scented cookies and it's just oh it's so gross um, so definitely learn from my mistake and do not send like just a bar of soap, like keep it all in its original packaging. It was not, it was not a good look. <laughs> yeah. The shirt that smells like that might be good, but the cookies were not. That like taste like, oh no, no, no. My husband was like, thanks for the soap and the cookies, but now I'm eating soap flavored cookies. I like, oh, <laughs> I it okay. I, I learned. <laughs> Definitely. That's funny. Yeah, that's, yeah. A good, that's a good tip. Yeah, kind of yeah. <laughs> by doing them once or twice. But yeah, cool. Good. Okay. Yeah, I think the other um, kinds of tips we thought might be interesting to talk, chat about were like low cost kind of items. Like obviously, you know, kind of grocery store stuff that people might need, but other things maybe that you've made or um, been able to, you know, kind of fill a box in an affordable way. <laughs> Yeah, so definitely, like, the grocery store people always shop there. Um, I like to shop at, like, bulk stores, like a Costco or a Sam's Club. Mm -hmm. um, buy items that are individually packaged. So you get a box of, like, 25 bags of, like, granola or a trail mix, right? You don't have to send all 25 bags at one time. You could, like, send three or four at a time. So you buy once and then space it out amongst your care packages. So you don't go to the store as often, so you don't impulse buy as much. That's, Smart. <laughs> that's, that's what trips you up budget-wise. Um, so I like to do that. That's one of my big tips is to, like, go shop when things are on sale and then, like, space them out throughout your care packages so you can save a little money. But there are a lot of, like, almost free or, or actually free things that you can send. Um, I'm a big fan of photos in care packages and like printed photos are great um but you could also send like a thumb drive of photos so Aww. that way you aren't spending the money to print photo after photo after photo you can load a whole bunch of them maybe someone wasn't able to make it to a family vacation so you load a bunch of pictures from family vacation on that thumb drive send it in the mail and then they can look at the ball um Photos themselves are usually pretty cheap. Like you can get penny prints on a lot of like websites or even at drugstores, they do a lot of really cheap photo printing. Um, and while they don't take up a lot of space in the box, they're like the number one thing people want when they're away from home, right? They want to see their loved ones. They want to see the pets. They want to see home. Um, and those are things that they can they keep and they like aren't going to eat the the photos like they it's it's not something that they consume it's something that's there they can hang it in their room they can hang on to it for a long time so while it may be like a penny for you to print it it's like it's got a lot of inherent value 
um, right. when again. So I love to do that. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things. Um, also, like if people are away from home, um, hometown newspapers, hometown magazines, mm -hmm. stuff that is basically free or you get a subscription to, right? Um, after you read it, after you consume it, go ahead and put it in the box and send it to them so that they get a little taste of home wherever they are. Um, and that's super cheap, super easy. I used to package up my husband's mail, like his magazines and all that kind of stuff. Like we've already paid for it, it's already there, and I would send it to him overseas so he had something fun to read. So those are good ideas and good options. Yeah, those are great ideas. I could see too the, the thumb drive, um, like for your college student, just sending like memories from childhood or summer, um, that kind of thing would be really yeah. Really cool. You can also do like right around finals time, like good luck messages from family oh, and friends. That is so right? cute. Oh, um, like little yeah. video clips, maybe. Yeah, I did it for my husband's birthday. I had everyone send me happy birthday videos, and I like sent them to him um, so that he had, you know, everyone he loves was saying happy birthday on his birthday. So that's an awesome way to. That's great. Yeah, and it's the cost of the thumb drive. So and they can reuse the thumb drive if it's a college. Right, thing. send it back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Nice. So do you have any kind of general, for someone getting started maybe, like just general tips that work well for all types of care packages? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. My number one tip, like whether you're sending a care package to someone in the military, someone at college, a new neighbor, whatever it might be, is to think of things, one, that they will actually use, and two, that they actually want. Um, so the worst thing you can do is send a box full of Skittles and the person doesn't like Skittles, right? Like <laughs> things like that, that you think it's a great idea because you love Skittles, mm -hmm. um, but they don't need a whole box full of candy. So I, I really, when people feel like they're stuck or they just don't know what to send, like what does your loved one like? Like what does that person enjoy? Um, those are the things that you should be sending. And same thing if you want to decorate the box and you don't really know where to start. Pick a hobby or a sports team or like a favorite spot you guys vacation and decorate the box like that. Um, it's not supposed to be stressful or <laughs> create, you know, worry. It's supposed to be fun. So keep it fun and, and do that by sending things that they're going to enjoy. Um, certainly, you know, make use of things that are in your house or like grocery shopping that you've already done. Um, don't overbuy, like don't send... 45 granola bars if you don't know that they like those granola bars or if they never had that flavor of granola bar That's also something I've done before so pro tip there um, I sent <laughs> them like 45 granola bars. He's like, cool, I actually like this flavor so, <laughs> Thank you um, <laughs> But I also tell people to send a little bit extra because there are always going to be individuals in college Overseas whatever it might be who aren't getting care packages who aren't getting mm -hmm. mail from home and so your loved one could then share those items with them so that they also feel included. My husband told me that there were people while he was deployed who never got any mail, like zero mail, oh. no packages, no letters, nothing. Um, and that's oh, like, that's just, that's so awful. So I always sent extra granola bars or trail mix or whatever um, for him to share with those people who didn't get something. So they had something. Um, my last tip, if you're just getting started and you're looking for things to send, um, love notes, especially if it's like a romantic uh, person that you're sending it to, or open when letters are really popular. Um, so you send like seven or eight envelopes and it's like open when you're um, mad, open when you miss me, open when you're homesick. And like you can include a note or like something funny or a picture or whatever it might be to like help them through that moment. Um, I've seen ones like open when you get an A on your first test um, and oh, you know, nice. like confetti, you know what I mean? Like it, it's yeah. fun, like a celebratory thing. And so that way you can send a bunch of those and they can hang on to them and open them as appropriate. That's really cool. It's like the care package that keeps on giving, right? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You gotta like make the most of that mail service while you can. <laughs> right. That's really cool. Yeah. So um, one of the other things I wanted to ask about are letters that you would include. Do you often include also something written and what kinds of things do you write? Just, you know, updates from home or how do you know what to write about? Especially if it's coming, you know, a week and a half later and you know you're going to be emailing or texting or calling between now and then. I feel like I don't even know what's right in a letter anymore, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Everything's so instant. It's hard yeah. to like think about where you're going to put. So first answer is yes. I always send something written. Um, 
I usually got around like the, I don't know what to write kind of thing by picking up a greeting card um, from the store. They make okay. so many like cute, I miss you greeting cards or thinking of you. If you don't want it to be like super like mushy, it doesn't have to be. It can be funny, right? Um, so I would pick ones that, you know, like you're the chips to my salsa and like I feel, you know, alone and hungry without you or whatever it might be. So like Aww. things that are cute and funny. Um, and I would write just a little note like thinking of you, hope everything's going well, like know how proud I am of you, that kind of thing. Very like something that's very general, right? Um, what you could also do is write just a list of like 25 reasons you love that person. Um, so that's very, like, it's not time sensitive at all, or 25 reasons you're proud of that person, or 25 things you miss about that person. Um, you could also do like fun memories. You know, do you remember when? And then just outline like a really important day for you and that person. Maybe it's like your anniversary or something like that that you want to talk about or your wedding day. Um, and maybe include like why that day was so special and, and what it meant to you and, and that kind of thing. So you can come up with some stuff that isn't like this was how my day was today. But if you want to do that, you can do that too. <laughs> yeah, I love those ideas. Those are really cool. And things that we don't often like think to talk about but are really can be really meaningful to both people to reminisce. Exactly. That's one thing that, you know, as a military spouse, you learn very quickly is that separation, like, doesn't necessarily make the heart grow fonder, but it forces you to remember some of those things that you love about that person, right? Because you're no longer annoyed that their toothbrush is not in the toothbrush holder. Right. I wish their <laughs> toothbrush wasn't in the toothbrush holder, right? Um, so you remember some of those things that, that you really love about that person, and that's what people want to read about themselves, right? Like, things that other people love. So... That's, that's a perfect idea. Very cool. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Do you have any other questions? Um, so one thing I've always struggled with, so this is my daughter's in her second year of college. And so I did a lot of care packages her first year, um, was trying to not just fill it with junk food, like mm -hmm. healthy options, but sometimes healthy options like fruit, you can't really ship easily. Um, but also trying to be a little more, um, eco-friendly, like not all this wasteful, mm -hmm. something, some tips you already, you know, covered that you already gave, but do you have any other thoughts on those two things? Yeah. So I would look at, um, like functional items, not just consumable items. So for college students, maybe it's a new set of headphones or maybe it's some study aids, highlighters, that kind of thing. Like things that they'll actually use that are food related. Mm -hmm. um, that's where photos, open when letters, some of those things, like even the thumb drive with videos, like that's where I like to supplement a care package with that stuff. Um, because you don't want to just eat junk food all the time, right? right. I mean, that's, that's tough. They make some good, healthier snacks out there. Um, mm -hmm. There's some beef jerky that's really good. There's some like Quest bars and some of those like protein bars that are actually like not full of sugar and not full of junk. Um, so definitely look at some of those options. And then I always say like college students, especially, um, they need money because they <laughs> always need money. Right. So right. maybe a coffee gift card or like a gift mm -hmm. card to a restaurant in the area that they could go. They don't have to eat dorm food. They could go actually have like chilies or something like that. Something that is like a sit down meal as like a treat mm -hmm. for themselves. Um, that, my parents did that when I was in college every once in a while. Like, I would just, like, there would be a $25 Chili's gift card in the mail. And right. I could go have something that wasn't, like, pizza from the dorm, that kind of thing. So, that might be an option. I, I know I always appreciated that. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Those are good ideas. Definitely, yeah. Although, I think, as a college student, I did eat a lot of candy. <laughs> there was <laughs> Great. Oh, I did. Right. Yeah. No, I completely agree. But sometimes you're like, I cannot eat another jelly bean. <laughs> Right, right, right. Yeah, good. Hmm. Cool. So do you ever get care packages? Oh, yeah, good question. Yeah, <laughs> so um, I have gotten a few in my time. Um, my in-laws were very sweet and sent me flowers one day, like, as my own, like, care package. Um, there are also quite a few companies that send care packages to military spouses who are going to, oh. which is, like, cool. the 
thing ever. I cannot tell you. I mean, we're the kind of the forgotten ones, right? Like, right. Um, and so there's a company that I work with quite a bit, actually, um, that gives care packages or sends care packages to military spouses during deployment. And it comes with all sorts of fun goodies. And they have like a challenge that you participate in each month. So like you're making the most of the time when your loved one is gone and not just like putting one on pause. Yeah. So I've gotten a few of those. Um, and that is like such a day brightener. Like I can't even begin to tell you. And wow. I think, yeah. What kind of things are in, in those care packages? Is it um, like kind of things or? Sometimes, sometimes it's um, productivity tools. So like here's a to-do list notepad that you can like really kick butt and, and get stuff done. Maybe it's a water bottle um, so that you go work out and like are staying active during deployment. Like all okay. each, each box has like, they're called Brave Crate. I highly recommend checking them out if you haven't. Okay. Um, yeah. And so they, each box has a theme. And so like things in the box, like match that theme. So whatever it might be like one theme was like all about sleep. So it was like a sleep mask and like, like a meditation. I, those. <laughs> <That's not laughs> <great. laughs> I know they're fantastic. Um, so yeah, care packages and you guys are, are doing it, right? You're sending care packages to a bunch of different groups and mm -hmm. to people who maybe ordinarily wouldn't get one, college students or new homeowners, um, new parents, like they could use yeah. that, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's always a good one too. Yeah, very awesome. cool. That's great. Well, yeah, thank you so much for chatting with us. Wait, I have, a, I have a few more, more questions. She's got more. She's got more. Okay. Yeah, two um, more. Two. So can you tell us a little bit about the name of your oh, yeah. business and your blog? I think it's an interesting name. So you want to hear more about that? Yeah. So Countdowns and Cupcakes um, was born from the idea that um, military spouses spend a lot of time waiting, right? We wait mm -hmm. for the military. Um, that's the countdowns piece. We wait for the military to send our loved one home. We wait for them to tell us where we're going to live. We wait to tell the, have them tell us like if we get to retire or not. Like, I mean, there's all kinds of things that we wait on the military for, okay. but you cannot just wait. Like you have to continue living your life. You have to go on the run. You have to go on the girl's trip. You have to eat the cupcake. Like you just got to go for it. So countdowns and cupcakes was born from kind of that duality of military spouse life. Like I got to wait, I got to wait, I got to wait, but I also want to keep living my life and I, I want to do all the things I've set out to accomplish. And nice. I think, yeah, I think that my business and my blog helps families do that because mm -hmm. you're staying connected. You've got one more thing that's off your plate. You have time to go to the park with your kids because you don't have to decorate the box, things like that. So that's kind of the origin for my name. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then we have to ask about your dog. So <laughs> I see a lot of wiener dogs in the background. <laughs> Yeah, you really can. Dog. Yes, yeah, so I have um, a wiener dog named Baxter. Oh. Um, they're sleeping on the window right now. <laughs> and then we have a German short hair pointer named Ruger. So, oh. and, like, little tiny German dog and a like, big German dog. Um, Interesting. They are, like, the funniest little duo ever. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we walk in the city a lot, and they, they get all kinds of love. Is there? Oh, cute. Well, send us a picture of your dogs. <laughs> I will. I will. We're animal lovers. We're big yeah. animal lovers, so yeah. Oh, believe me. We, we, uh, I'm obviously, I'm a Right. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think that, yes, yeah, excellent last yeah. questions. Those are <laughs> that was my favorite one. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. We really appreciate it. We want you. And, oh, actually, one more thing. If you could let people know where to find you, that would be great. Yeah, so I am um, Countdowns and Cupcakes on my blog. It's countdownsandcupcakes.com, and there's always a link in my to my shop on my blog as well. So if you're looking for some pre-decorated flaps, they are there for you. Um, and then on Facebook, I'm Countdowns and Cupcakes, and then on Instagram, I am R A McQuiston. Um, okay. So you can find me there. Awesome. Search care packages on Instagram. I pop up too. So <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so thank much. You.